So in this video, I want to talk about antibiotics and give you a broad introduction. So what do antibiotics do? They target bacteria. They either kill them or they inhibit their growth. So this is in huge contrast to other drugs that we see on a day-to-day -day basis because antibiotics do not modulate our own body function. Most drugs target receptors in our body. They modulate our own body function, like the beta blockers. They block beta receptors in the heart and in the kidney. But for the antibiotics, it's different. We actually don't want to even touch our own body cells. We only want to target bacteria. So if you want to develop an antibiotic, it makes sense to first think about what are the major characteristics of bacterial cells, so of prokaryotic cells, and then contrast them to the eukaryotic cells, to our human cells, and figure out what are the differences. Because in the end, you have to find something that is specific for bacteria and that you don't see in human cells. So I've listed here the major differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. And these are also the major targets. So first of all, bacteria have a cell wall. We don't have cell walls, and this makes it a perfect target. The osmotic pressure in bacteria is very high, and therefore they require an additional cell wall to make sure that they don't burst. Prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells both have cell membranes, but they are slightly different, so there are some targets that arise from these differences. Then another very good target are the ribosomes. As you know, the ribosomes are the workbench for protein synthesis. And the eukaryotic cells have ribosomes and prokaryotic cells have ribosomes, but they differ in their chemical composition and size, and that makes them as an ideal target. Eukaryotic cells have 80S ribosomes and the prokaryotic have 70S ribosomes. Another very good target is nucleotide and DNA synthesis. So if a cell divides, it has first to make nucleotides, and out of these nucleotides it can make DNA. And there are slight differences. First of all, if you want to make nucleotides, you need folic acid. And eukaryotic cells can just take folic acid from the diet. So we take it from our diet. However, bacteria cannot. Therefore, they need to make their own folic acid. And so they synthesize folic acid from scratch. And obviously, the enzymes that are responsible to make the folic acid can be targeted by bacteria because we don't have them. Another step in DNA synthesis that we can target is the enzyme topoisomerase 2. So the topoisomerase 2 is an enzyme that is required to remove the supercoils that are always going to be ahead of the replication fork when DNA is transcribed. So now we have in eukaryotic cells topoisomerase 2. This enzyme bacteria have this also. However, there are slight differences and they can be targeted. In bacteria, the enzyme topoisomerase 2 is also often called DNA gyrase. And the name already reflects that this enzyme is slightly different and therefore can be used as a target for antibiotics. So here I have drawn a bacterial cell and you can see the cell wall here, then the cell membrane. And it, if a cell divides, it first makes nucleotides, then it makes a DNA, the DNA get, gets transcribed into RNA, and then in a process called translation, which happens on the ribosome, you make the protein. And so in this simple drawing, you can add now all the different antibiotics that we have. Because as we mentioned before, we want to just target differences, characteristics of prokaryotic cells that are, that are not present in eukaryotic cells. So let's just put in the major classes of antibiotics with their target. So as we have already mentioned, the cell wall is an ideal target because eukaryotic cells don't even have one. So we can inhibit cell wall synthesis. And we do this with our so-called cell wall synthesis inhibitors. The most famous group, the beta-lactam antibiotics, where our penicillins and cephalosporins belong to. There's also another group which are called the glycopeptides, for example, vancomycin, which also inhibits cell wall synthesis just in a slightly different way than the penicillins and cephalosporins. Another target is the cell membrane. 
The cell membrane is slightly different, and we have one drug, the dactomycin, which intercalates into specifically the cell membrane of bacteria, and therefore can be used as an antibiotic to destroy bacteria. Then a big class of drugs are protein synthesis inhibitors. As I mentioned in the beginning, the ribosomes are an ideal target because they differ in chemical composition and size. So by interfering with these ribosomes at different spots, we can actually interfere with any step of protein synthesis. So we have a ton of different drugs that all target the ribosome. These are tetracyclines, macrolides, chloramphenicol, streptogramins, and the aminoglycoside antibiotics. Further, we can target DNA synthesis in a way that we just interfere with this enzyme topoisomerase 2, which is important to release the super cause. And this is done with the quinolones, the inhibitors of DNA replication. Another way to interfere with DNA synthesis is even before that we just block the nucleotide synthesis. And here sulfonamides and trimethoprim fall into this category. So I want to finish up this introduction with just looking at gram-positive versus gram-negative bacteria because their specific characteristics are very important to understand which antibiotics work against which kind of bacteria. And so as you probably have figured out, most of the bacteria fall into these categories gram-positive and gram-negative. So the gram stain, which this refers to, is just reflecting different characteristics of the cell wall of bacteria. The cell wall of gram-positive bacteria shows up blue on the gram stain. You can remember this with I'm positively blue over you. The cell wall of gram-negative bacteria shows up red. And you can just think about it like red is something ne negative, just a warning. So how does the cell wall of gram-positive versus gram-negative bacteria differ? So what I've drawn here is a cell membrane, and that's kind of similar for both of these um, bacteria. And that's what harbors the organelles and the cytosol. So then we see the cell wall. This is the cell wall of gram-positive bacteria. And so the major constituent of the cell wall in general is peptidoglycan for both gram-negative and gram-positive bacteria. So the name already tells us how that's building up. So the glycan refers just to chains of sugar molecules that you can see here, which I've drawn in dark blue. But as you can imagine, I mean, if you just have chains of sugar molecules, that's not gonna give you any rigidity that you wanna have for a cell wall. So what bacteria do, they hook up these sugar molecules, this sugar chain, with peptide bonds. So they cross-link this sugar chain, and that gives the cell wall then the rigidity. And so, as you can see here for the gram-positive bacteria, they have really a lot of layers of this peptidoglycan. In contrast, the gram-negative bacteria have just a thin layer of peptidoglycan, maybe one or two layers, but it's similarly composed. We have, again, the sugar chains, and they are cross-linked with peptide bonds to give it more rigidity. So now the big difference is that gram-negative bacteria have, in addition, another outer membrane. This is just a lipid bilayer similar to the inner membrane, the cell membrane. And this outer membrane just surrounds the peptidoglycan layer. So the composition of the cell wall of gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria is very important to understand which bacteria are going to target them. Because what you need to know is that this peptidoglycan layer, although that looks, looks pretty thick, is actually not a really good barrier for drugs. So if a drug comes here, it can easily penetrate and get to the cell membrane, for example. In contrast, the gram-negative bacteria have this outer membrane, and this is a lipid bilayer, as I've mentioned, and so this is very difficult for drugs to get through. So the only way to get drugs into the inside of the bacteria and do stuff is via a so-called porin channel. So these are little channels that let in solutes and more hydrophilic molecules and also our drugs can get in there. These porin channels let only in very small substances. 
And if you're going to see structures of antibiotics and you see a very bulky, huge structure, you're going to know that it's never going to get into a gram-negative bacteria. And it's going to help you to predict the spectrum of activity of the antibiotic. This concludes a general introduction to antibiotics.